Hello everyone, I am Julian Carvajal and I am very happy to be here today with the one and only uh, Veronica Journey. Veronica, thank you so much for accepting this invitation today. Thank you so much for having me, Julian. It's a pleasure and an honor always every time I get to meet with you. So Veronica, actually you were the person who inspired me to say Julian and not Julian and just a kind of honor uh, my uh, people, uh, the indigenous peoples of Colombia, of South America, of Latin America. So thank you. I will be always thankful for, uh, you know, inspiring me to, to just like honor my ancestors. So thank you so much. Bernica, I'm holding here uh, some tobacco. Uh, it's a special tobacco because this tobacco is coming from Turtle Island. It's not coming from Tacaranto. It's not coming from Canada. It's coming from Mexico, from Veracruz. Uh, and it's a tobacco that was uh, seeded by uh, indigenous peoples in, in Latin America, in Mexico. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, I offer you this tobacco uh, as a way to thank you for joining us today, for being here today in my elementero earth to talk about uh, the beautiful creations, the land and the plants. So, Veronica, this is for you. Uh, I just put it to the universe to get where you are right now. So uh, thank you, Veronica, so much and welcome. Thank you so much, Julian. I love that. What a beautiful um, offering uh, that you just gave me um, in the form of tobacco, which is one of the teachings we've spoken a, quite a lot about. And one of the teachings that I share quite often um, with people, especially people in uh, um, very populated areas who are very interested in learning about indigenous culture. And so, um, thank you so much for welcoming into the space. Thank you so much for your offer. And I accept your tobacco offering and uh, you can mail it to me if you like, or we, we can do what we've spoken about, um, which is uh, basically, why don't you tell people what I, how, how I showed you or how I taught you to offer the tobacco. So if I'm not able to mail you, but actually I have more tobacco from the previous uh, engagements that I have had with you, uh you just go into nature and you if you want i love trees so you can actually offer it to the nature put it back into a tree you can dig a hole and just put it out there of course without the clothing without the the cloth but uh you can just put the tobacco as an offer getting back to uh nature absolutely absolutely and um so uh to add to that um Anytime anyone handles medicine, including tobacco, you would want to be really mindful of how you're feeling and what you're thinking about. And it's just really a moment to be very mindful. So you did it so wonderfully. Thank you so much for that beautiful tobacco offering. And as well, people who are live in very um, urban centers should be very mindful of um, the cleanliness of the city as well. So you might, instead of using your hand, you may use your foot instead to dig that hole depending um, but always being very respectful to the earth and to the tree and uh, and then I'd like to thank the tree as well for accepting my offering um, and uh, and so to continue that um, I just want to quickly say that uh, tobacco offerings can be made to any of the four elements um, sacred fire uh, often people will um, offer tobacco to a sacred fire um, my family taught me to always offer tobacco to the earth under a tree, very similar to what I've shown you. Um, other um, ceremonies where tobacco is offered to the water um, and uh, the water is very, very important tobacco offering. Um, and, uh, and then finally to the wind or to the air to make that offering when, when you can't um, make that offering any other way than, than uh, for me, I've offered it to also the spirit of the wind. And so first of all, I want to introduce myself um, as is in our traditions. So Veronica Johnny in Sikasan, Nea Nehiao Esquayo. So my name is Veronica Johnny and I uh, identify as a Cree woman. I'm a member of the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation. So I am First Nations I identify as First Nations, although I have Métis in my background, my, on my mother's side. Um, but the way the whole system works, it's, uh, it's uh, based on uh, father's ancestry. Although as we will see in the future, that will change and, and as we adapt and, and um, change that will happen. And so I also want to acknowledge that I am here on uh, Manitoulin Island. Well, I would like to uh, 
give gratitude to where you are in North York, right? Are you North York? I am based in downtown, but I engage with community members in North York and I thought we could in this opportunity, uh, but yes, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. And, um, and also I want to acknowledge all the uh, caretakers of the land since time immemorial, both recorded and unrecorded. Um, and so, yeah, I'm here today to uh, talk about the earth. And uh, as we were talking just previous before we started recording, I was, I was telling Julian how in preparation for this talk, um, I, went to, I went to the earth. And so my husband and I took a lovely walk to some local falls here um, and uh, spent some time out on the land. And I made a tobacco offering before I went and asked for, you know, what, what, what could I share uh, in this time that I have uh, with, with, with you all? And I just wanna welcome you all. And I hope that um, wherever you are, that you have access to the earth and access to nature, because it's a really important part of being human um, in, in, my, in, in my opinion. Um, so we're here to talk about I am in my element. Well, I am in my element when I am doing interviews, when I'm doing performances, when I'm rehearsing, and when I'm creating art. Um, and so uh, all of these ways uh, in, my, um, in my teachings are that um, ways to also heal, to process what we're going through, um, to... Uh, a way to create understanding, a way to work through and find solutions. Um, many, many of the work uh, projects that I uh, am, uh, end up being a part of, a lot of art comes out of it, even if it didn't start with art. Um, and so um, I wanted to talk about uh, people making a connection to the natural world. Um, so I want to ask you, Julian, when, what was your last connection what was the last time you made a, a good connection with with the earth so as i mentioned before we started recording i i went and hug a tree and contemplating and it was so beautiful because you could hear the birds chirping and and it's part of the thanksgiving address that i have the gratitude and i have had the pleasure to listen to uh so that was the last time that i engaged with nature and of course i went sipping some water as well having that beautiful element coming from the earth. Uh, so that was the last time. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's do that now. Let's everybody have <laughs> water. We have access to water. I already Let's finished. Oh, no, I have some left. Oh, good. And well, before I'd like to take a sip, I always say, um, hello, water. Yeah. Hello, water. Thank you, water. Thank you, water. And I love you, water. I love you, water. And I be really believe that it makes a difference. I really believe that it actually changes the physiology of the water, and um, um, and this isn't a new thing, right? This is this is a, a belief system. So, and and it's about respect, respecting the water. Um, and so, um, so uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, that um, my granny t spoke to me uh, quite a bit about in our Cree culture is to walk gently on the earth, just even saying that, walk gently, you know, it really is, um, it's a whole, it's an attitude, it's, um, it's a lifestyle, if you think of just walking gently on the earth, what, what does that mean to you, uh, when I say walking gently on the earth? Contemplate, be conscious of where you're passing by, uh, be conscious of, uh, the beats of the earth and the beats of your heart and just connecting with what is around us. That's beautiful. Thank you for, for uh, bringing in the rhythms, the different rhythms of, of life. Um, that's one of the things that I wanted to speak about today too, is, um, is uh, the, 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 the different kinds of rhythms. And so you're speaking about our heartbeat, our rhythm and um, the earth's rhythm. And so, uh, Interestingly enough, like when uh, when people travel or they, um, they they travel so far that they cross many time zones, um, it said that if you um, put your feet on the earth, um, you'll your body will adjust quicker to the circadian rhythm of that time zone, and you'll you'll suffer less from uh, jet lag. 
apparently. And so anyway, that's um, one of the things that I want to talk about is the direct connection with the earth, um, which is something that um, it's only been in these last hundred years where we've had this real disconnect from the earth, right? Um, and so actually having your feet on the ground is important. Again, being very mindful of like urban spaces um, that, um, you know, if you can't go somewhere that's nice and clean beach or clean, um, you know, place where there's not a lot of animals using it um, for a bathroom, basically, um, that um, to use stuff like moccasins or leather shoes or stuff without that doesn't have the, um, what is it, um, like the rubber on the bottom, right? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that connection. So it's very important to, when you go outside, to try to get that direct connection uh, with the earth where possible. And if you can't get that direct connection, then you can um, do visualization is very powerful. Um, use your own mind to basically connect. And whenever I do inside ceremony, I basically, that's, the, that's, that's where I start is creating that connection uh, in my mind through my the bottom of my feet directly to the earth through whatever, however many floors it needs to go down, however, and to make that connection uh, uh, visually, um, you, you, can, you can actually make it. And, um, and there's even products that you can buy that actually create this connection if you can't be outside and they're like called grounding mats. They were very common when we first started using computers uh, back in the um, 90s. Um, when I used to be a computer tech. Um, but that knowledge of electricity and that knowledge of how computers works uh, um, really um, um, applies to the, the energy of the earth too and how the earth energy works. Um, and so uh, walk gently is, is another way as well for me um, to think about like consuming less, you know, thinking about how much packaging is in the stuff that I'm purchasing, uh, considering how far something has had to make its way to me. Um, that, that, that's all part of walking gently, um, traveling less. Um, so now where before I might travel for one specific thing, I wait until I've got three or four things to go and actually make that trip, you know? Um, so just again, just being really mindful of daily stuff, like, you know, walking gently. Um, and there was a, something else that you had brought up earlier, um, the cycles of life. Yeah, the cycles, the rhythms, that, that's what I wanted to get back to is when, what you were talking about, the rhythms of the, uh, of the earth, um, that uh, the rhythms of other life uh, forms are not the same rhythms uh, of uh, human beings necessarily, right? Like, especially when we're really in our mind and, you know, work and, and other concerns are driving us versus our own physical concerns. Um, and so uh, um, bringing that connection back to uh, the our rhythm and connecting it to the rhythm of the earth, I think is really, really an important, uh, an important thing. Um, and so that's where the hand drum comes in with me. You know, you've, you've, you've uh, witnessed a lot of hand drum songs. And so I wanted to ask you about that. Like, what do you think about the drum connecting us to earth and what you've experienced so far with hand drumming in circles with me. Vibrations, how we vibrate, how we can align ourselves. It's kind of the axis. It's kind of that connection, direct connection, and only with like the beats of your heart and the land, but also the connections through sound as well. Uh, uh, it, it's similar to this magic ceremony when I have experienced this magic ceremony because it's a way to heal. Uh, it's a way to say, I hear you. I hear you from here. I hear you from here. Mm -hmm. I just hear you. I'm just open to listen to what is out there and align ourselves. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, the smudging ceremony. Absolutely. And... Um, uh, some of the teachings within the smudging ceremony itself with the four sacred medicines um, help me connect to the earth, definitely. Um, and uh, a lot of people will use a shell when they use the smudging ceremony, which brings in the element of water because shells come out of water. Um, and then uh, the, the plants themselves, whether people are smudging with sage or cedar or sweet grass, um, that those medicines, once they're lit with the fire, the element of fire, um, those, those um, leaves come from the earth. And then once the smoke 
um, once you see the smoke kind of rising in the air, now you're now you see the element of air. So the smudging ceremony brings in all those four elements all at once. And for me, it grounds me like you like n like nothing else really. It's it's just uh, it's just so so wonderful. And so since I said that, I you know what? I think I've got everything I need right here <laughs> to offer. That's great. Uh, so I'm going to offer you smudge. And so uh, some people will say uh, to use a match, which is very uh, a very good tool from a fire. Um, and um, when they see a lighter, they're like, oh, no, you're supposed to use a match. You're supposed to, you know, and it, that's that's true. It's really good to go as close to the element as possible. Um, but I'm fine with using a lighter because this is what we have access to. And this is one of the tools of today. Um, other people, though, just for everyone out there who's like, you have to use a match. Um, I've been in traditional ceremony where grandmothers were saying, no, you don't use a match. You use an ember from the fire. And that way, again, it's like you don't use an, a match because matches need to be saved because when you're out on the land, every match counts. And so, you know, there's always some other tradition that people might bring up and go, hey, you know, it's this way. So my granny taught me we all have our own way. And so that's what I like to honor. I like to honor everyone's ways. Um, and uh, we're, we're adapting, right? We were talking earlier about being raised um, in, you know, in Catholic or Christian traditions. And so many of us were, you know, like that was, that was, there was no other choice really for indigenous people over here um, and for other, other places that exactly that were colonized, you know, it's like, that was, that was our only choice. Um, and, um, and, uh, and, and over time, many of, many people have changed their, their belief systems and many people have kept them. And so for me, it's honor where you are, honor your teachings where you are now, honor your ancestors, honor your life. You know, we're, we're all having our own experience. And so I'm lighting the medicine here. And as I light the medicine, I'm, I'm, I'm saying thank you for the medicine. And I also remind myself respect for fire because we've got an open flame here. So it's always very important. And so now you can see that the smoke is rising and, uh, I'm just gonna take a little smudge here and then offer the smudge to you as well. Thank you. Yeah. And that, just that little bit of smoke, that's all we really need. You know, uh, some smudges are lots of smoke. You don't really need a whole lot of smoke, but then, you know, you just use as much as you need. And sometimes you need a little bit and sometimes you need a lot and you just, you just use what you can. So this is sweet grass. The teaching behind sweet grass is, uh, is a teaching of togetherness and family and teamwork because uh, one braid of grass is only so strong, right? But when you braid them together, um, they become stronger like a rope. So just like us, um, the sweet grass can, um, uh, when we work together towards a common goal, then uh, everything, Everything works out much better. Mm, it's just lovely. I just love this sweet grass. Can you smell it? <laughs> I wish, I wish, but I, I do remember the smell of sweet grass for sure. Yeah, it smells sweet, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes. Yeah. It does. yeah. There's it's almost like got a like a pepperminty um, smell, but more sweet than minty. Sure. So just for those. Um, yeah. And then what else, what else can I talk about with the earth? So, um, so make a connection wherever you are, you can make a connection with the earth, regardless of how urban an environment you live in. You can always, like you were saying earlier, Julian, about this listening to the birds or feeling the wind on your face or, you know, seeing um, even just weeds coming out of the concrete, you know, there's life everywhere. We can connect with, with the earth everywhere. Um, I really like to think of the earth as well. Sometimes I'm, I'm a bit of a, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily a Trekkie, but I'm really into science fiction and aliens and, uh, and science, science fiction type, you know, space type, type, type stuff. I'm a, I'm a child of star Wars, you know, um, and, uh, thinking of the earth as our spaceship really i think can help people really understand how important it is for us to take care of our spaceship because like on any ship um whether it's a whether it's a uh airplane or whether it's a ship on a boat like on the a boat on the water 
or a, you know a cruise liner or anything anything like that there's a water supply on those ships and you don't want anybody tainting the water supply and so that's what's actually happening today that our water is being tainted um, all over the earth and so we need to uh, i think uh, all of us become much more um conscious of this and help our leaders understand that we want to keep spaceship Earth's water clean and potable and usable for everyone. And that it really should be a human right and not something that people can purchase. And only certain people can have access to, to a clean water. It's something that we all, uh, it's, it's everyone's responsibility. It's not even a right, it's our responsibility to maintain that I write, I guess, would be the thing. What do you think about that, Julian? I think that is important, as you mentioned. And, and it's interesting because we engaged in a conversation uh, a couple of years ago, right before the pandemic. And um, I was creating a, a, an exhibition that couldn't happen because of COVID. And it was uh, Save Me, a call for artists to save Mother Earth. And then you, you jiggled and you said, Julian. <laughs> Mother Earth doesn't need us to save itself. It just came, you know, like save by itself, and then it will be about the humans trying to. So, from that moment to, until now, it is about, uh, you know, uh, one of my main teachings or, or a very present teachings that I have is that a, when we are a settled people, we come from a westernized uh, mentality and we think about the world to serve us and not us to sell uh, to serve the world uh, so it is the same thing so it's about uh, how uh, indigenous peoples are more ecocentric ecocentric and everything is our nature and it's really interesting when some people uh, said like oh how this person from this part of the world knew exactly the same thing as this person in this part of the world and, and one of the things that I have learned are working with all of you wonderful indigenous peoples who have taught me so much is because you observe, you take the time and because nature has spoken the same language all over the world and uh, the birds in South Africa, in Canada, in Argentina, in, a, you know, in Denmark, in China, everywhere, they, they just speak the same language. So uh, it's about keeping the gasoline and the spirit of the earth and the water has this uh, important element at the beginning when I was learning about the four sacred medicines, uh, I was wondering why water is not contemplated as a sacred medicine, but then I understood uh, actually the total emerges from the water and, and all these medicines come from the water, from the land as well, so uh, that connection uh, became very clear to me that it's embedded already in the four sacred medicines and everything around us is about water as well. I love that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Water exists everywhere, everywhere within us, everywhere within the, the um, air um, and out in space and everywhere in the universe. That's, that's a, um, it's a common element. And that's why water is such a powerful, powerful um, conductor of energy um, and conductor of vibration right um, because you know you know what if you've ever been um, uh, near a lake or near the water and there's somebody out on the water but you can hear them like they're standing right next to you right um, that's that shows you how far uh, water can take that that sound that vibration that signal I can remember being a young person um, growing up um, in the Northwest Territories, and uh, um, we only got CBC radio, like we only had one radio station, right? And uh, I even grew up when we only had one or two TV states, TV uh, uh, networks, right, on the TV, right? Um, but um, the, the thing about the radio station is we would get uh, Edmonton rock radio on super, super cold days, we would actually, the signal would travel that far. And again, it all had to do with water and how cold everything was. And that that's why the signal 
could reach us was because of the snow, because of the signal and because of the temperature that like when it was minus 45, you know, we were like, oh, hey, we might get to listen to some real rock and roll radio or something like that, something from the city, you know, so it was really special. Um, so yes, water, water is such an important, um, an important sacred elephant. And of course, uh, as human beings, we're mostly water. Um, and so whenever I give that gratitude to the water, like I was saying before, you know, and, and putting that gratitude into the water and the love into the water, it's also coming within me. So again, making that connection. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about my, my rock band, the Johnnies. Um, and we recently uh, just we recently just um, released a song called Butterfly, Salas Gutierrez remix. Um, and uh, what it is is a song about the butterfly teaching. Um, and and you've you've worked before with Joanne Delaire and Joanne Delaire. There's uh, if you, people want to Google it, there's many places where uh, Joanne has spoken about the butterfly teaching, and it's about transformation. And um, so my rock band, the Johnnies that I have with my husband, um, we just released a song specifically that was inspired by the butterfly teaching and transformation. And that's what a lot of us are going through um, right now. And um, so I'm going to I'm going to send you some links that you can actually attach to this broadcast so that if people want to go and um look at the places where I reference the earth like uh, even though we're a rock band we put out four albums um, we have one song completely dedicated to the earth called rock oops pardon me we have one song uh, completely dedicated to the earth called rock um, where we took elements of uh, the earth and words words and elements uh, from the earth um, words and elements of strong women who are often the rocks of uh, the rock of our family and um, words and elements from rock and roll. And, you know, um, and that's, we created this song called Rock. And uh, um, one of the lines in the song goes, um, rock for a hundred million years, you know, cause she's been around for a hundred million years. She's been around for a really long time. And then um, later on in the song, uh, after the solo, it, we sing rock for a hundred million more. Um, and really like, um, uh, when I told you about that, about how, you know, it's, it's so um, human, uh, it's so, um, it's so uh, egotistical of us as human beings in a way to think we're going to save the earth um, when really what we're really trying to save is ourselves because the earth will continue uh, beyond uh, whatever life um, exists on, on her. Um, she will, she will go on for a hundred million more. So, so that's a, that's fun um in our um in our music another song is called it's better in the bush and literally it's just like you know up north that's what we call the nature we call it the bush let's go to the bush you know let's go camping yeah. in the bush um and uh, in the, our song i'm electric um i sing i sing about aurora borealis which are the northern lights um and i sing about being mother nature's child you know so like i mean in our rock music you'll find a lot of references to the earth much more so than you would in a lot of other like just popular music um we also released another song called frog in a pot salas gutierrez remix again just recently which talks about um the temperature of the earth changing um and our situation with climate emergency uh, with the climate crisis right um and so um but yet it's a really fun pop song like pop song that you can like sing along to rock song right and um, and oh, also sorry Jenny, uh sorry veronica uh so we're talking about a uh, you know uh i moved to canada almost 17 years ago and you were talking about transformation and and also how uh the pollinators are so important and the flight creatures as well and uh, the butterfly being one of those ones uh so i'm trying to relate to the feelings and emotions that I went through when I arrived to Canada, and and it's also uh, connecting with the land and and see the resiliency of plants. How you put a seed on the ground and then you just have to wait and be patient. And if you want, you can just talk to it and send all your positive vibes to it and just transforming uh, until you know. Be patient until it grows and it gives you. Uh, aliments it gives you a uh, food it provides you with seeds that let us to experience these beautiful colors of cherry blossoms and all these beautiful flowers 
are coming from the air. So um, when uh, I moved to Canada, uh, when I was a newcomer, I mean, I, I will always come, I will always say like I'm a newcomer still uh, because I'm always learning something new and I'm learning and learning. So I'm always in this constant transformation. And the connection with the butterfly that you talk about, um, moving within territories, moving to different lands, moving to a land that has been inhabited for over 15,000 years, a land that welcomed me through, of course, a process from the government, but also a land that is here to take care of me, to provide me shelter, to provide me food, to provide me uh, harmony. Um, if you want to talk more about uh, those connections of transformation within nature, Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Yes, so transformations within nature. So the cycles of life is a, is a big transformation right now. Um, I'm, I, I recently had someone very close to me pass into the next world um, and uh, I'm still within my grieving time of, of um, and remembering of her beautiful spirit. And, uh, and um, so the cycles of life are, um, are a big, big thing about transformation. You know, um, even just talking about grieving now, you know, like one, uh, one of the elders that I work with, Aline Laflamme um, out of BC um, speaks about um, the, the, um, the transformation from life to death is, is very similar to the transformation from um, it, it being born into the world. So that, that uh, when babies are born into this world, there's a labor and that labor is painful and that labor does not, um, it's not pretty <laughs> and it's very messy and there's a lot of screaming involved and effort. Um, and that um, when we're making our transformation into the next life, um, those same things can be present. And uh, some people are born, you know, within a half an hour. Some, sometimes that labor is very quick and very easy because of uh, the way the mother is or the way her body is or her, her genetics, whatever it may be, um, her situation. Um, and uh, it's the same thing on the other side where, um, you know, it can be fast or it may take many days. Um, and that's where it becomes very difficult when you uh, see someone slowly pass to the next world. It's, it's most, it's, uh, it's very painful. Um, um, and uh, for uh, everyone really involved um, and to, to um, honor that transformation. Um, uh, and uh, really it's our own belief systems that really get us through, um, uh, you know, such a loss um, because uh, um, it's uh, my belief system um, I see my sister on the other side and I see her standing tall and looking beautiful and dancing with a shawl, you know, a powwow shawl dance. Like I see her um, dancing proudly and um, walking gently and uh, singing softly and laughing loudly, you know, um, and so, uh, uh, she's such such a loved loved uh, um, relation in our in our community. Like so many people saw her as an auntie. Many people saw her as a mother, even though she didn't have any children of her own. She was a mother to so many people, you know. Um, and so these transformations of life, like we need to celebrate them too. So so my family chose, and she chose. She didn't want a funeral, and she didn't want to wake. She wanted a celebration of life. And so that's what we did. We, that's what we had for her. And so many people came from so far, far away. And, and my na our nation um, helped and like helped um, um, with people's travel. Uh, like it was just incredible, the, the outpouring of love from our community and from the indigenous community and from um, just everyone in, in, uh, in Lana's life that, um, and, um, and so, so there's the transformation from, from uh, the other side into this world. And then there's the transformation from this world to the spirit world. Um, and so we're talking about butterflies and the transformation. Well, um, one of my favorite other uh, flyers is the, um, 
chikonopsis is how you say it in 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 Cree chikonopsis, but that's the um, uh, the dragonfly. The dragonfly, uh, it is said um, in my culture, is uh, can travel between this world and the spirit world. It's the only living being that can that's alive on both sides. And so that really excites me um, to know that um, there is, it's, it's almost like a dry, it's almost mythical, like a dragon, you know, like, and the dragonfly, um, that it can be on both sides. Um, but it's, uh, it's something that I believe in um, very strongly. Um, and, uh, um, and, um, and going back to the butterfly, um, it's, it's that, that, that time in the chrysalis is very important. And I feel like the COVID, the two years of COVID um, was a bit like our, our, our chrysalis uh, as human beings. Many of us um, were very separated from the rest of the world um, for, for that whole time. And so for me, that, that transformation was huge. Um, and how was it for you, the, that transformation during the couple of years of COVID? Uh it was challenging and I'm actually it's interesting because uh, my best friend she said like Julian you're a social butterfly so I used to be this person who is always everywhere uh you know engaging with people uh coming home very late and uh, leaving very early because I was always outside with my friends and working and doing so many things and it was a uh, time for transformation a uh, it was a pause that we have to take as society has uh, living creatures and, you know, letting other species also to have a break from uh, the footprint that we're causing as humans as well. Um, because at the end of the day, when you're talking about the dragonfly and, and the butterfly and, and the plants and everything that the lands provide us, reminds me of the mushroom and how uh, the mushroom is a representation of what kind of dies comes uh, out of earth uh, in a different way. Uh, so I feel that I was uh, this mycelium, I was this uh, mushroom, I was this creature uh, rethinking and transformed and a person who uh, maybe needed this pause, maybe no, a pause that I needed it and a pause that many people needed it to I rethink ourselves to know what it was our role in society. Uh, what are we doing for the earth, uh, and how we can uh, take measures to uh, stop the speediness of climate change uh, that is happening uh, currently, and you know all the forestation, all the the cutting of those trees in, in, South Africa, in South America, in Brazil, all those trees that have been cut it. Uh, also here that we have a lumber crisis as well and that relation in between US and Canada and how the trees in some places in BC, I was surprised when they were talking about trees that has been there for like 200 years, 300 years that they were cutting them. And it's like, a, unfortunately, a COVID helped us to kind of think about our role in, in, in this world, but also uh, show some of the greediness that exists within ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The, the old forests that are getting um, cut down, that's, um, it's, um, it's like a insult on injury. It's really, um, you know, like uh, forestation is actually something that can be renewable. Like, like that's that's actually a resource that we can manage. But when we're talking about hundreds of years old of of species, that's stuff that I think that we need to really um, cherish and protect. And like these these places should be like like protected Canada parks kind of thing. So it's like um, because. Um, um, what we lose with each one of those old trees is like when people, I don't know, it becomes really sad when you start realizing what we're losing um, with, with all the old growth and, uh, um, and all the old trees um, uh, in all the areas of the world that um, where there, where we have the abundance. Um, but yes, South America is like the lungs of the earth, right. And just uh, everything that's happening. Um, and absolutely. We, we always need to look at, um, 
how much we're um, like how much we're using, right? Always like it's it's not just uh, recycle; it's reduce, reuse, recycle, and uh, refurbish or something. I think there's 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 a few things there, but everybody's always really focused on um, on um, uh, recycling. But there's the reduce as well um, is is a big is a big one. Um, as well, like I, uh, we're talking about transformations. You know, daily there's transformations, right? That like daily we we um, we can we can um, if if we want to like really be present, we can witness the transformation from night to day, every day, with the sunrise. And this morning, um, my husband and I are really lucky. We we get up early. Uh, we get to go to bed early and we get up early. And so we're up before the sunrise. And so oftentimes we do get to greet the day with the sunrise. It's really wonderful. And so we were out on the front step this morning greeting the day. And my husband uh, was commenting on the squirrel that he has been noticing at that time of day. And the squirrel would go right up to the top of the tree and hang out there and see, he was watching it and watching it. It's like, is that really a squirrel? Like it's so far away, it's, you can't kind of really tell. And as soon as the sun like reached, uh, the, the, the sunlight reached the squirrel at the top of, of the, the tree, Dave could see that the squirrel stayed there for a little while and then was off. But it was almost like he was saying, it was like the squirrel was just like, okay, I got to greet the, the, the day and I'm going to go right to the top of the tree. And I'm going to get in my sun bath first thing in the morning, that first great rays, and then I'm off and I'm busy for the day, you know? And I've literally been doing sun baths like 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes at a time, because I also burn really easily. Um, that uh, um, to help with my mood, to help with staying grounded, to help with uh, you know, uh, my healing, um, and my health, uh, have been doing these 15 minute sun baths and, um, and you know, you think that's not a lot of time or you, maybe some people might think it is a lot of time, but the more you do it and the more kind of, it's almost like, you know, people are like, I got to get in my workout. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like, no, no, I got to get in my sun bath. Right. Um, and as well, we have cats and so cats as well, when you talk about the rhythms of humans, like like cats don't care about the rhythms of humans, right? Like it's, that's not their life at all, right? But so, so again, if we are learning from the animals um, who are very connected to the earth, what do I see my cats doing often? I see them rest a lot. And so uh, I'm getting better at resting. I also see them seek out the sun a lot. And so I seek out the sun, you know, I also see them stretch when they get up. So I stretch when I get up, I try to remember when I see my cat stretch, I stretch, you know, like this is the kind of thing, right? So, so um, it's those cycles of the earth. And so greeting the day, people can do that. Um, honor the moon uh, when the moon is full, keep, start keeping track of when the full moon is and just um, honor the moon on that day say you know what for whatever meal it is is oh it's the it's our meal to honor the full moon or whatever it is right these are ways that we can connect to the earth because um, the earth is connected to the moon and the sun and the stars and so to, to me for me the element of earth uh, includes all of those other elements um, so yeah connect with the sun, sun sunrise connect with the moon um uh, and 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 then also, what are we doing to protect the water? Every one of us. What is each one of us doing to ensure that um, each one of us has um, uh, clean water and healthy water to drink? And especially, um, you know, First Nations. There's many First Nations communities that still do not have um, clean healthy water and that is something that everyone every Canadian needs to be mindful of um, that we have to hold the government accountable to make sure that that changes and that changes fast so what do you what do you think about that it remind me uh Veronica of the dish with one spoon built mm -hmm. um, and it's about be mindful about who is coming next uh, and how we need to ensure they have access to the water. I'm not gonna be very political, but yes, I also want to acknowledge that that has been a huge issue. And many people uh, all over the world think about Canada as a very welcoming country, uh, 
with high standards of human rights, but unfortunately, even in our own society and Turtle Island and many indigenous nations do not have access to drinkable water and, and an ongoing issue that uh, hasn't been resolved yet, even though that has brought to the table for many, many years. Uh, and so precious this element because um, it's like, yes, it's about earth, but without the water, we wouldn't be able to have uh, the soil healthy enough to bring us all these elements. And what I was thinking about this, uh, for those who don't know, and as Veronica mentioned before, uh, she uses uh, the drums a lot. And, and the drum, so I was thinking about the drum, and the drum is made out of leather, and this leather is coming from an animal, an animal that was born, an animal that was born because uh, actually two a species, two animals got together because they actually had access to water. They had access to uh, the, um, the food that the earth provided, it, the herbs and, and all the grass that they were able to eat. Uh, so all this connection with the drums and the leather and the animal and the animal having been able to have a food from the land and how the water connected us also uh, you just took me into like a cycle of how all the elements are connected and how all the elements need to be present. The same thing has a, you mentioned in a previous workshop about uh, the grandmother moon and the grandfather sun and how it is important to find the balance. And as the trees needs, uh, need the, uh, the sun to uh, raise and to grow and how also they need to rest and the brief and the compressed uh, those leaves at night time uh, with those full moons and uh, they're able to kind of like exhale uh, after everything that they have given us so you just took me through a whole and i have adhd so it is very easy for me to connect things from here and there so it just took me on a whole trip uh, about uh, the connections uh, with the water and with the land and with the earth and also um how, how i can make a commitment myself uh i had the fortunate I, I i was very fortunate because i was a scout what we used to call before the boy scouts uh when i was little and i've been able to connect with nature i've uh, been able to connect with nature and 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 being aware of the privilege i had to to be able to swim in a clean river um uh and a lagoon and lakes and and actually, I have had the pleasure of drinking water from the land just coming out of like the, you know, the paramounts. And, and that's a privilege. And, and I just want to mention that, uh, you know, when you come from a different territory, um, uh, many people don't feel the connection at the beginning, especially if we're talking about Canadian society uh, that sometimes take us into little baby steps one by one and we have to kind of fit in trying to connect but sometimes we forget that uh, why don't we try to connect first with the land why don't we try to connect first with what is around us with the raccoons which can be an, a new animal that actually we don't have in colombia example or the uh oh my god the skunk as well and how we can connect first with the land and to understand that maybe by connecting with the land or maybe not because by connecting with the land we can connect with the energy that is around as you were talking about before when you were it and the computers and how energy works uh, is the same thing how our energy where they're coming from and the energy of the planet actually can align themselves and can help us to navigate uh the new territories that we are inhabiting as well absolutely absolutely um that reminds me um you know the earth the at the, uh, the center of the earth is lava right it's there's fire there's fire at the center of the earth. So the elements are always, um, all the elements are always present. So even when I, um, um, cause sacred fire is a really important part of a traditional ceremony. Um, and so uh, you reminded me of that. You reminded me of, of um, that, uh, you know, the earth itself is the earth, the water, her, her lifeblood um, is, is flowing th uh, and always there. The air, um, you know, our 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 um, our environment uh, on the earth, and and then her sacred fire at the center of the earth. So, um, and again, these are all ways that I also use to visualize when I'm when I can't be out in in earth. Um, that's always a, a really good way for me to um, to connect. 
um, with the earth. Um, and uh, I think what, what you were talking about before, um, I think it, it really brings me back to something I wanted to um, ask is like, what is your one-on-one -on -one connection with the earth? And I like, and not just you, but the other people watching, what is your one-on-one -on -one connection with the earth? And what is your relationship with the earth? Um, uh, just, just, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, literally like, you know, uh, um, you and, and in other um, workshops that I've done, I've often talked about the relationship uh, as a, as an infinity sign, right? I get people to make the infinity sign. Um, and the infinity sign is never ending. It's always constant, no beginning, no end, but it's also the relationship that we have with each other, right? So it's, what, uh, my relationship going out to you and so this relationship is the relationship that we have with the, the, the earth itself and so we, we call it we always offer before we ask we always give before we take and that that relation is constant and so before the sweet grass before the sweet grass was picked tobacco was offered before we harvested the plant you see uh and, and that's with um animals too you know if before we harvest an animal an offering is made of tobacco or some some kind of uh, usually tobacco you know and and then before we harvest the animal again like being really mindful walking gently consuming less using all parts of the animal all of this kind of thing so but this is also the relation we have with each other and so um, I often say, and I and maybe you've heard me say this before, that to me, colon, colonization is just about taking. It's just this part. It's like this part on cycle, right? And then when you add into that, consumerism is just this on cycle, right? It's like, yeah, we offer money, but um, really that offering does not equal what's coming, what, what we're taking, right? So uh, making sure that the offering is always uh, as much as you can give is the teaching. Uh, whenever we go into ceremony, you're, you're asked to offer as much as you can give. And some people that'll be more, some people that will be less. Some people it's fine if they offer nothing because that's all they have, right? So, um, so again, everyone has their own way. Uh, when we come together, we like to respect everyone else's way. Um, and um, uh, when we're in the circle, we're all equal in the circle there's no one above us there's no one below us um because uh we don't want to put people up on a pedestal because it takes them out of a circle and we also don't want to pity people or think that we know better than them because now we're looking down on them and so it's always important whenever we come together like this to come together as equals with respect um and uh with honoring each other's ways um and be being still being able to learn from each other and have fun while we're doing it, right? Is it, you're just taking me back to another re, uh, teaching the wampum belts and the Turo wampum belt, which is about respecting each other. Uh, and you know, the boat, and once again, the presence of water and also the chip, and then how we have to respect and we have to understand this. Uh, so I'm mindful of time. And uh, I, when I moved to Canada, uh, they, I have always, I, I am indigenous from Colombia, uh, from the Kalimas and the Kimbajas as well. And unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to engage much with indigenous peoples from my own territories. But when I moved to Canada and when I started my own journey in 2016, uh, going through the Dodden Konomsa, talking to Maria, who then introduced me to the Slickers and to also... Um, a grandmother, Renee Thomas Hill, and uh, many other artists as well. Uh, it was uh, very, I, I was trying to be as respectful as possible uh, because I was out of my comfort zone and also didn't know how to engage with indigenous people. So I'm thinking about my peers uh, who are newcomers, who are new to the, new to the land. Um, how do you think they can engage uh, with indigenous teachings, indigenous peoples? A, uh, what is the most respectful way to uh, start a conversation uh, with you? 
oh, well, um, come to where we are. You know, come and see us. When are so, you going to invite me to right? the Virgin yeah. Island? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. That I'm going to really, we're going to do this. Uh, I've got something happening that you got to come, come and see me. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's always community stuff happening. There's always, you know, everyone's always welcome. Everyone from any nation is always welcome at any indigenous, uh, event. Um, that's, uh, free to the public. Right. So, um, um, so if you see powwows, um, uh, there's so many powwows happening all over the GTA um, and all over Turtle Island. Um, and to be uh, um, just ready to learn when you when you're ready to listen, um, uh, ready to make mistakes as you converse with us. Um, because, uh, even like, even people who've been in Canada, you know, their whole lives, um, uh, none of us learned about indigenous culture, uh, in, in school. And it's only been recently, um, like I've been involved in uh, arts education in the school system since 2013, I believe, um, or 2015, for sure. I got really active and have been active since then. So that's, so that's uh, seven, no, 17 years or something. Yeah. Um, anyway, it, I've, I've been doing this for quite some time. Um, and so, uh, um, and to, um, uh, yeah, being respectful is, is, is the biggest key, like be yourself, but also, um, uh, you know, listen, listen more than you talk. Right. And, um, and be ready to um, be ready to change your mind about us, you know, because uh, uh, I believe Canada is is different um, as a nation um, because when settlers first came to Canada, they needed to become part of our community to stay alive because of our harsh winters. And so I feel that that's what really differentiates us between um, from the from the other countries on Turtle Island. Um, because of that, um, and that's what that's what makes Canada different. That's why Canada um, has been so welcoming to so many people from all over the world. Is that teaching um, of the circle that when we come together in the circle, um, uh, there's a word in my language, tawau, right? It means welcome, tawau, welcome. And there's there's three there's three um, meanings in, in in the language. One one is that there is room. So when we're in the circle, what do we do to make room for people? We just take a step back. We take a step back. We make that circle bigger. So that's what we've been doing in Canada since since first contact. The second is that there's all there's our, there's a path. So you can already walk someone's path. There's already all these pathways that you can walk already, or you can be um, a leader if if a new path needs to be made. You can walk that path and create it for other people to follow you, right? And then the third meaning of Tawa, which I just love, is there is time. There is enough time. And just even saying that there's enough time is just like, whoo, because, you know, life and, you know, all of these things that we feel are priorities, whether it's work or, you know, all of our commitments that we have for whatever it is. Um, there never seems to be enough time. And when we go, when we say Tawa, there's enough time. It's okay. There's enough tawau. There's enough time. You know, it really gives us. Uh, it really opens up a space of time that actually creates more time. If that makes any sense, does that make sense? Totally. I I totally <laughs> hear you. Uh, actually, when I was creating one of the projects that I was working on, uh, I always talk about each project has a spirit. And everything happens for a reason because that's the only thing that needed to happen, and it happened. And it's also uh, the colonizing and understanding time and how it's perceived by indigenous peoples and can be totally different to the way that we work. And it can be very challenging. Uh, to give you an example, as a project manager, once uh, I somebody was interviewing me and telling me about the ten steps in project management and. Uh, procurement and all of these items that I had no idea about because I don't manage the language and it was about how a, we needed to understand and decolonize the teachings of time and how time can be very 
uh, different, uh, you know, uh, to give you an example, like a, in, in, a, in elementary school back home in Colombia, a, and I did it with my nephew actually during the pandemic, one of the first things that we did together for his biology class was putting a bean uh, with some cotton and water and seeing it grow. And I told him when this bean is big enough and becomes a plant, we're gonna be out of this. And he has the, the and now it's a big one, uh, but it's about time. Uh, maybe some species take longer to grow uh, or to be born and some others take lesser time than the others. So it's about understanding of the time, as you mentioned before. And I love uh, these teachings of this work because it's actually about uh, creating the spaces and, and feeling welcome. And I want to thank you, Veronica, uh, for giving us the opportunity to share uh, with you this space, virtual space for uh, in my element earth and how we can connect with nature and continue growing the relationships in between uh, newcomers, indigenous peoples, non-indigenous peoples and people inhabiting Turtle Island. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, hi. <laughs>